for a pop and swap, I thought it would be cool to try out the Headless Horseman. Dork Lair! Welcome to another Dork Lair action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the Mythic Legion's Baron Voligar 2. Released in the Alithia Wave, this is, as the name implies, the second version of Baron Voligar. There was also an Artemis 2 in this wave. I did a review of that one, I think, a week ago. But uh, yeah, version two of Baron Voligar. I like that they're doing V2s of characters. They're kind of like evolving them, having them either age up or showing the version of them in the past. Uh, the next ones that are going to come out is a two-pack that has Gorgo and Attila. That was associated with the video game. And I'm loving all the new parts that came out of him. We have these brand new, way over the top pauldrons. We have the new head sculpt, the new collar the new chest piece, and then it mixes in some Aerithyr Wave parts like that skirt and some classic knight slash evil armor parts and just coming together to make an awesome figure. Plus a few more items. I don't have the cloth goods on here right now that we'll show in a little bit. But anyway, let's get into this review. Starting off with a quick look at the packaging, we have the always awesome Nate Barch art on the backer card of this clamshell style box. We have the Mythic Legions logo on the front with a bio. On the side, on the back, we have even more wonderful artwork with the rest of the wave, at least the standard figures, some Mythic Legions info, and then the logo for Lithia's Brood, the main faction of this wave. And here we are zoomed in for a close-up of this figure, all the little details, and there are a lot of them, especially on these new parts, the head, the pauldrons, the chest, and the collar piece there. There's just a lot of stuff going on here. Got the cool wings. I mean, these shoulder pauldrons are massive. They're way over the top, and I love it. I love that they did that. There's, like, all sorts of, like, dragon-type bat wing-type serpent stuff going on there. This head sculpt has a massive scar across the face right there. Kind of reminds me of Snoke a little bit from Star Wars. I know this is a really dark figure, but there's a lot of different colors going on that... It might not pick up very well in the camera, but not only do you have silvers on these pieces on the collar, but there is blue on the front of the collar where you have like these bone-like pieces. And then these bones along the sides, like spinal kind of looking thing along the side of Alithia's face here on his chest, those are like a bluish metallic color. So you have like silver, blue, metallic, silver, metallic, purple, blacks. And most of the blacks are that glossy vampire black, but over in the belt, you do have some leathery stuff. You have some gray fur, and yeah, so this is the same belt that came on a few of the Aerithyr figures, but I think they mix and match the piece in the front here. And it's somewhat hard to see with the head on. I wanted to pop it off and show the inside of that collar, which is like a quilted, almost like a coffin or something, right? Like with the vampire theme. So that's a nice touch right there. That that uh, collar piece is great. And then I pulled the pauldrons off so you can kind of see what he looks like with them off and get a sense of like how this thing is painted under there. So you have black glossy arms with a flat purple color over here. So nice uh, contrast there to all the shiny black. And he's got the he's got the classic orc style evil armor. And then you've got that same flat purple with the silver edge and the glossy black here and again the evil armor for the boots we do have the skirt piece that kind of throws back to the original baron Volgar, which i'll show in a minute but yeah this is an awesome figure this is really cool stuff and next up let's take a look at baron Volgar 2 next to a few other figures first up we have the vampire theme over here on the left is the original baron Volgar, just with like a head swap and everything else is standard baron Volgar. and then on the right is his daughter i believe that is lucretia and then his mother is alithia which i haven't opened yet so i don't have her out to do the comparison because i usually wait till my review to before i crack them open and going with the bat theme i guess here he is with the mafex batman dark knight returns on the left and on the right is the mezco justice league batman with a head swap and cape swap and here he is with a couple masterverse figures on the right is skeletor from the san diego comic-con two pack on the left is a kit bashed he-man that has the body of the 40th anniversary retail he-man on the um like the viking he-man parts like the skirt boots head harness 
armor and stuff like that from the uh, from the Viking He-Man. And then so you can see how he scales with a couple of the smaller 112 lines. Here's the 112 Collective Freddy Krueger and the Black Series Darth Maul comic version. And finally, here he is with Phobos the horse from the Alithia wave. That's Alithia's horse. And I think mom would probably let him ride her steed for a little while. And I think he looks awesome on it. And getting into the accessories, I thought I would show these two accessories just on him. And that is the soft goods that he comes with. These are the traditional Mythic Legion soft goods. They aren't the higher quality tailored pieces that they've been having designed by C. Jessam. These are the classic pieces. So you've got the basic fur piece that goes around his neck. And then you have the cape that I don't really have on there well, because quite frankly, now that they're doing the C. Jessam designs, I don't really care about these capes too much but you know it comes together pretty well and it looks cool if you want to have that more dramatic uh princely or or kingly type royalty look to him he also comes with the elven or vampiric shield right here that comes with orcs and sort of like the more ornate fancy type shield and that's got a little bit of some uh, metallic purple in there but otherwise a solid black. He's also got this sword that is pretty much the same sword that Lucretia comes with and I love this sword. It's like the more ornate style long sword. Very cool looking piece. It doesn't come with a lot of figures so this is a nice one to get. But if that wasn't enough he comes with the two-handed sword over here and that does have a little purple accent there with the gemstones, black handle, silver blade. For a pop and swap I thought it would be cool to try out the Headless Horseman and it does look good. The only thing is the collar piece prevents the head from looking down. So he's kind of slightly looking up. And, you know, you could probably pop the head off a little. But I do think that this headless horseman body is kind of perfect for vampires. And then the other swap I thought would be kind of cool. And this is subtle that a lot of people might not even notice. But to take a black knight and put the shiny black evil parts on him. So you have the gauntlets and the boots that just like kind of change the black knight and make him a little more evil looking pretty neat because the parts match so well and finally for articulation this is your standard mythic legions 1.0 style figure articulation the head is on a ball joint now this particular figure is going to be pretty limited by things you know his head's going to come into contact with this collar piece um you know but you can get a little bit of expression out of that head sculpt. And then the pauldrons are obviously massive. They're going to get in the way of things a bit when you have them on. So I'll show you both versions. So they can move up and down like this because they are pegged onto the back right here. So you can move them up like that. And then with the pauldron on, you can get his arm out that far. Uh, looks a little weird with the way the pauldron rises up. And then you can swing the arm forward. Again, the pauldron's going to move around quite a bit there. And then with the pauldron off, his arm will come up to about a T pose here. It will swing all the way around. Single jointed elbow, twist above the elbow, twist at the gauntlet, and there's a hinge at the wrist, and then you can spin the hand as well. One of the ongoing issues that's been happening with the Alithia wave and these new torsos is they pop off very easily. And so they can feel a little bit loose. And all I do when I have this situation, I just take a piece of paper like this, stick it in there, and that tightens it up. You could, some people like to just put a piece of masking tape on the ball joint, but you know, that keeps it from getting loose and kind of keeps it nice and tight. But yeah, I can see how this issue would bother some people. For me, I kind of like it because it makes popping and swapping just a lot easier, but it is on a ball joint and you can crunch forward and crunch back and you can twist and he can rock side to side. Legs are on a hinge and swivel. They can kick forward, back about this far, they can go out into the splits, twist at the thigh, twist at the knee. Knee can angle to about 90 degrees. Then you have an ankle rocker at the foot. It can hinge down and up and it can twist as well. Anyway, that should do it for my review of Baron Volagar 2. If you're interested in seeing a review of Olivia's horse, take a look at my video review right here. And until next time, may the force be with you.